Jesus told us to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit and teach them to obey my commands. For I am with you always. Our primary goals are to evangelize nations of the earth, disciple new believers, plant churches, and continuously share the benefits of the gospel, our passion, transforming lives, have working relationships, growing teams, expanding strategies, advancing church, do you want to be a part? It's a mission that is possible. So we're talking about kingdom of God and we're talking about the benefits of the kingdom last night. Tonight we want to talk about the culture of the kingdom. Kingdom culture. I think this is most important. There are so many things about the kingdom of God that we want to talk about. But last night we had the benefits of the kingdom. Oh, how I love. Thank God for salvation. The benefit of is this new life in Christ, this new birth that you give the exchange life in Christ. And one of the benefits we have we, is the 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 benefit of the king's favor the king in the kingdom favor and we reveal king in king or king is jehovah elohim el shaddai the almighty el elion the mighty god and high the children and you see king's favor we have the figure name is jesus hallelujah the favor of the king and i talked last night also of the benefits of understanding on the bosom and we call that wisdom wisdom and that we grow and we have that benefit of god gives us wisdom from above if any man lack wisdom let him ask of god who give it to all men liberally and abrade it not and it shall be given him that's one of benefits as kingdom citizens we have a we have a we have a of the zone and you have, have a pipeline as it will to heaven we have a free access to the throne of grace then the kingdom of god of benefit of God's protection and promotion, protection and God's promotion. And we did take us to Psalm 5, God, and let all who take refuge in you be glad and let them sing for joy. Spread your protection over them. And for those who love you or name may rejoice in you. For surely, O Lord, you are blessed. You bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield psalm 5 11 to 12 god so long us with a favor the righteous but i tell you that is benefit to the shield and don't forget the but the angel of the lord and comfort around those that bring another benefit benefit and the benefit of deliverance the righteous cry psalm 34 the lord hears them he delivers them from all their troubles somebody say hallelujah in your home tonight the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed spirit. Crushed spirit. And a righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivered it out of them all. Receive tonight. Receive tonight from that session matter. Receive this, well, this extra word come tonight for you to receive. The righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the his servants, and none of them, no one will be condemned who takes refuge in him. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. The benefit of deliverance. Psalm 91. Psalm 21. The shepherd guiding us. Hallelujah. Oh, he that dwell in the in, in the in the shadow of the Almighty. Oh my hallelujah. Have so much. The Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no wickedness in him, Psalm 92. I tell you, protection. God is a refuge, protection in the kingdom. Protection, benefits of prosperity. 
missed, right? <laughs> that is a good, and I'm talking about prosperity, and, and the key thing about prosperity is richness and not necessary riches. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I talked about last misfortune pursue the sinners, but prosperity is the reward of the righteous. A good man leaveth an inheritance for his children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. Proverbs 13, 21 to 22. Hold on to that. Again, God's plumb line. We talked about the plumb line last, last night. That line. Look at the clock of the line. Huh? This is what the sovereign law said. See, I lay in Zion a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for, for a sure foundation. The one who trusts will never be dismayed. I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plumb line. Hallelujah. Woo. As long as you align with God, the plumb line, you do alignment, plumb line with God, he will deliver us from all our troubles. And my, my, my word to you last night is that righteousness is the key to prosperity. And when you align with God, God. So, so the citizens, uh, uh, the fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. So, so, so we have, so, so they're the citizens. And in Philippians 3.20 says, but our citizenship is in heaven. Oh, come on, hold tight here. And we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly body so that they may be like his glorious body so our citizenship is in heaven and i want to read that i want to read some double versions philippians that's philippians 3 20 and i want to read philippians 3 20 from from the king james version it said for our conversation is in heaven that would come within the citizen for whence we look for the savior and savior the lord jesus christ so who shall change our vile bodies and he went on to change your bible into a right so our citizenship is in heaven philippians 3 20 and colossians 1 12 to 3 says giving thanks to this father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light for he has rescued us from the darkness from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves and i, I and that, that that is one translation and colossians colossians 1 12 to 13 and the king james version says who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin. Give God praise. Give God praise. We have this tradition. So the issue of citizenship in the kingdom, we are citizens. And, and, and therefore, Jesus once said, you know, you can remember Jesus speaking about this. He said, he said, my kingdom is not of this ruler, John 8, 36. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest from the Jews by the Jews. But no, my kingdom is from another place. And we could talk much about the citizens. So our citizenship is in heaven. And therefore, we live here. We have a citizenship here. So we have dual citizenship. We have in all the particular countries. So let's talk tonight about let's talk tonight about this issue of culture. And I want to talk about culture because culture is so important. Um and, and 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 then we talk about the kingdom of God is within. So 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 our our kingdom citizens 
You can see our kingdom citizens is like invisible. Let me talk about the kingdom culture. Culture. That word is always on our lips. So culture, when you talk about culture, it encompasses many things. And it is very important. Nobody can come in your country and teach you your culture. They come in your country to learn your culture. Once you understand culture of your people, you understand the people. Everything that makes a nation a nation and a people a people is wrapped up in their culture. And I want to say, this is the key to evangelism. You know, nobody can come here and teach us how to evangelize. We know people. We understand here. Nobody can come from another culture and teach us something. So you have to go and learn their culture. Fundamental number one. And let the people learn from the people how they live. So, and that takes some time. So we have already seen that, for example, every country has what one thing. Every country has land. Now, or territory. Without land, there's no country. And the land a people inherited in, in, in inhabit significantly influences the culture they develop. Desert, people live with desert dwellers. They do unlike, they're not like, they're unlike to develop maritime culture. If you live in the cold, bad cold now, you have a different culture to be when you have a hot and wet and dry season and great temperature. <laughs> And you can't impose your cold, so they tell us we must wear a jacket and tie when they call and look at we don't need that here. We we we, we have shirt and tie and shirt, we don't need any tie, we have shirt, we can live here. <laughs> Different culture. So when I go to another country and it's cold, I have to have jacket, tie, coat, all kind of things to put on. You have to adjust. So let you talk about the kingdom culture. Every king country has a language. That we have a tongue, a language. So we speak English here. We speak English here, and speak English is our main language here, where we live. A country is not a country unless it has a major language. Our major language in the Caribbean is English. And we know the mother's English. Yeah. Other supplementary languages, but the major language is English. We were under British, British citizenship at one time control so we learn english and we live near to to the venezuela and the south american country so we learn spanish but our culture we do english so we talk english <laughs> yeah boy somebody call call and say he's a missionary you want to come to the caribbean to teach people english i ask you all kind of thing you know but sir or whoever teaching you we speak english and we do it very well we can speak the model English, we can talk trinial English, we can talk formal English, and so many different things. We spell English, we can spell like Americans, we do all kinds of things. American, we just spell honor, you know, H O N O U R. Americans spell H O N O R. So, you have, when we write in, we have to choose what language you write. So, when you, we who are authors and write books, see, language is different. So, you must have a language. A country is not a country unless it has one major language. Many countries in the world have numerous sub-languages and dialects, but every nation must decide on one major language because language identifies you as a country. And language is a key to unity. It is also a key factor in a nation's culture. So when the people who are out of God's will, and it be well, the God country were given different languages, they know, confused their languages and they went chaos. There was no unity. All right. And every all countries have laws. Everybody chose up a body of laws that everyone must obey to ensure peace, order, security of its citizens. With all law. You have no country, you know, let's win. And it's because 
and they will kill all the country they have laws and chaos they have no laws and they're fighting and the government is unstable and in chaos the laws of a nation reflect the culture of the nation and vice versa culture and law each affect the other so another thing about the nations is that every nation also utilizes specific and unique symbols to represent it and help it aspire unity and patriotism, and loyalty and pride of the nation and a strong sense of national identity. And the most famous symbol of a country is its flag. So when we when did we listen to the World Cup season, I went to Trinidad and Tobago in 2006, went to the World Cup. Every house in Trinidad had a flag. Nation, they put flag on the face, flag on the school, all along us flag. We were going to the, to the World Cup and we're going to get there again. And you come and see red, white, and black. As in, in, in Independence Day and Republic Day, we have our flags. You know, and the flag is. And that flag is a part of our culture. A national, from, a national flag symbolizes its history and sacrifices and suffering and triumphs of the people and what the people have constituted themselves to be. All of these things relate to culture. Few national symbols are more powerful than a flag. Another thing, another element of a nation share in common is constitution. A constitution is a contract between the people and, the, and its government. In many ways, the constitution is a cultural document you know, because it contains codified form of laws, ideals and values of the people, of the king dependent on who you wrote, who wrote it in, in our country, the government, the country, the constitution of our country guides how we live and move. Furthermore, all nations have a moral code. A nation's moral code embodies the moral standards under which the people have agreed to live, live and by which they have chosen to govern themselves. So you have a moral code in all countries, all countries. So a moral code concerns both written and unwritten standards. The written, and, uh, the written standards I express through laws and statutes, while the unwritten standards are transmitted primarily through traditions and customs and culture. Respect others persons' property, do not be a false witness in the court, do not steal, do not murder, do not commit adultery. All these are part of moral code. The tenth commandments are part of our culture. Our moral code is virtually every nation government on earth. I must have a moral code. Then the seven common characteristics of all countries is shared values. In order to live, have a country that runs effectively, people must have shared values, the same shared values in common. The people of the whole must agree that they have shared the same thing, such as life, peace, freedom, democracy. You have shared values. We are a democratic nation. We value democracy. Every, every then there are customs. Every nation develops its own custom. Custom drives our nation's shared values. A custom, a custom is a customary way of doing things, a behavioral pattern that is not only commonly accepted but is expected. Overall, customs generally are consistent through a nation, although there are many regional variations. Quite often, a nation custom are so distinctive that they become a point of identification of that nation. Such is certain traditional manners of dress and kinds of food. So when they talk about customs, then they come here. We have pillow, we have bus of shot and roti, and we have doubles. And so we have a culture. When you go to when you go to Jamaica, you have Aki and saltfish, Aki and you have Aki, you have Aki, that's a nice lovely Aki. And then you have patties. When I go to Jamaica, the first thing I want is patties. You have a culture, Jamaica. Everybody in Jamaica knows what patties is. And then we have a 
cultural dishes and cultural norms. Amen. Uh, going good, huh? So overall, customs are very consistent throughout the nation, although there are many general variations. Finally, there are social norms, and there are social norms in every nation. They are similar to customs, but they have greater force and authority within the society. Social norms are standards of speech, thought, and behavior that are accepted by the majority of people as right and proper. So we have social norms in our country. Violate a custom, and you might be taught eccentric. Violate a social norm, you will risk being orchestrated. And you might even go to jail. All of these together, all of these that I spoke to the land, language, laws, symbol, constitutions, moral code, shared values, customs, and social norm comprises what we call culture. That is what we call culture. You see all that? So, 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 how do we therefore define culture? And I, I read, I got one definition that culture is the act of developing the intellectual and moral faculties by education, expert care, and training. That's a nice definition. The act of developing the intellectual and moral faculties by education, expert care, and training. In other words, culture is the developing of a people if a people's intellectual capacities and moral awareness to a combination of formal instruction and informal modeling. Parents and society teach children the elements of, of culture. And as children learn and internalize those culture elements, they begin to live them. Secondly, secondly, culture is the enlightening and excellence of tastes acquired by intellectual and aesthetic training. That, 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 that was a very interesting take. Simply stated, we all come to think like the environment we grew, we grew up in. Our intellectual interaction of our environment literally produces the way we think and a way of thinking in us that becomes the way of our life. And so we become trained. You know, let me tell you something. You see the environment? Environment is a big thing. So you become trained in our culture. Nobody is born with a culture. We are born into a culture but we are not born with a culture. Hold up. We are not born with a culture. We are born into a culture. So culture may also be defined as an integrated pattern of human knowledge, belief, and behavior that depends upon man's capacity for learning and transmitting knowledge by succeeding generations. That's a nice, that, that is a bit long, long, long. So from a sociological perspective, culture is the customary benefits, social norms, and material traits of a, of a, traits of a racial, religious, or social group. So in the business world, culture defines the set of shared values, goals, attitudes, and practices that characterize a company or a corporation. Every company or a corporation has a culture. And when you come to churches, every church organization has a culture. So if you want to look at a scientific definition of culture, culture means to grow in a prepared medium. That is a powerful image. Each of us arrive on earth prepared. I arrive on earth in a prepared 
in a prepared medium, the country or culture of our birth. So it is a kind of prepared man. So we end up, how many prepared? We have our parents who in a prepared medium. Immediately we begin to grow in that medium, shape and influence by the cultural values, moral code, social norms, and our parents, community and society. We learn the language and the laws. This good medium is also where we learn our prejudices and our hatreds, our jealousy, our greed, and our pride. We learn all kinds of things in the culture. And then one day, I mean, it's all of that I talk about, we discover the kingdom of heaven. We were born again and became citizens of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. And that is where the challenge really begins. After 20, depending on what time you say, enter the kingdom, some people end up 20, 30, 40 years in a certain medium and trained to think in certain ways, 20, 30, 40, 50. I thank God I, I was born as a, as a young man. I got to enter the kingdom at about 10, 10 and a half years. So, so um, um, the kingdom a long time. Uh, I, then you're trained to think a certain way. We suddenly find ourselves into a new culture when we are born in. If any man be in Christ, he's a new, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. All things are become new. That is the power of the new birth. A new medium begins with a whole lot of new things to learn. And a whole lot of old things to unlearn. So when you when you enter into the kingdom, the new birth at 50, 60, 70, you have to learn a whole new thing from all them years. And that is why Sunday school and Sunday school is so important. And we teach our children um, Deuteronomy 6. It's critical. Teach them on the bed, teach them on the small, teach them lying and walking. Create that culture of the world. Mm. So it's very good. How do we get rid of the old culture in our hearts and minds to live a new one? That's the end, the universal challenge of every dual citizenship believer. For you see, culture is also what lies in the center of the great cosmic, cosmic conflict between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. There's war going on, and earth is a battleground. In this midst, this big cosmic culture. The battle for the earth is the battle for culture. And culture is the manifestation of the collective thinking of a people. In other words, whatever the people as a whole think collectively, their beliefs, their values, their ideals becomes its culture. And that is why we are so concerned about the change in cultures. So the key thing I want to say tonight is that so whoever controls the minds of the people controls the culture. Mm -hmm. Whoever controls the minds of the people controls. So you see people, whoever controls, if they're young people and people all of you think about the world, they bring the world in, they try to bring the world into the, into the kingdom of God where it can happen. They're at enmity. The Bible says that a man, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7, as you think in your heart, so you are. This means the way we think determines who we become. The way we think determines who we become. In the context, in this context, the heart is the mind. And the kingdom of God is the kingdom of the heart, so to speak. Therefore, the king of heaven is battling for the minds of his creation of his creation and those of us human beings who created in his own image so let us talk about manifestation now i want to share with me some manifestations of the kingdom of god manifestation culture manifests and i'm talking about the culture now of the kingdom of god culture manifests itself in a number of ways I want to give you about a lot tonight. 
I'll share with you one, values. Shared values are the defining characters of a culture and a nation. What we value reveals who we are. Our values reflect our character. Basically, a value is a belief or conviction that is considered worthy in and of itself by a person or group. It is a standard or ideal that regulates conduct and policy. Values are related to one's personal philosophy. Our values define our attitudes. That's true behavior and view of the world if we want to learn how to live in the culture of the kingdom of god we must learn the values of the kingdom one we have to learn the values of the kingdom jesus articulated the king articulated his value system at the very beginning of his public ministry here what jesus said about the value of his kingdom turn to matthew 3 5 3 to 10 and i want to read to you hear what he values and, and this matthew 5 is beautiful verse 3 blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Wow. Values in the kingdom. These, Matthew 6, 5, Matthew 5, 3 to 10, outline the value system in the kingdom of God. Jesus said it. We call them the Beatitudes. Or blessings from the Latin word, bless, which means best. We could call them the Beatitudes because they describe the way kingdom citizens should be in character, attitudes, and behavior. I want to put it to you tonight that values are very powerful from for the from, are very powerful and form the foundation of our behavior. They guide people and a nation in identifying what behavior is acceptable and not acceptable. And let me talk something that are acceptable. They shape us. Whether explicitly stated or unspoken, yet recognized, values form the foundation of our nation and shape our lives, shape the lives and daily experiences of each citizen. Society depends on certain values in order to function, such as cooperation, honesty, integrity. Businesses depend on their for their functions to go values of integrity and honor and fairness. So it is the values of the, of the church, holiness, righteousness. God gave the laws in the kingdom, value system, how we live and move and breathe and walk. So culture, so the first one is value system. Culture manifests itself in the values in the kingdom. Then we have culture manifested itself in the priorities. Culture manifests itself in the things we regard as most important. And what we do quicker is important. In other words, whatever we are prioritized in life reveals our culture. If we prioritize, if we prioritize the sanctity of marriage, our culture will reflect it in its laws. If we prioritize protecting, protecting our children, our culture will reflect it in its laws. Customs and social norms that bring that that strongly discourage 
even penalize divorce, adultery, and other marriages. That custom are marriage busters. Practice sanctity of life will produce a culture that protects the elderly and the unborn and refuses to sanction the harvest of all the issues with abortion are there. And you're not are talking about the issue when the mother's life is in danger. Hear what Jesus said in Matthew 6, 31 to 33. So do not worry what we shall eat or what we shall drink. What shall we bear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be guided to you. So in the kingdom, though. But another thing about the kingdom are behaviors. The way we reveal behave in our culture, the way we behave reveals our culture. It is that simple behavior. So if you go come to Trinidad, we are outgoing people. Where we behave, we reveal our culture. If four people get in the house, then the fifth one come on, he put on the fire and train. We are, we are, that is, reveals our culture, our behavior. We have good behaviors, we have bad behaviors in our country. We do like, we, we, when, it's a, when the traffic lights are stopped, we want to cross you. We have bad cultures, I see bad cultures, different parts of the country. And then we just step across in Barbados and we stand up by the traffic light and we wait because everybody in Barbados is in the traffic light. We, we come in some cultures, we just show everything we turn the ground. When they go to America, Although we have laws, you know, you go to America, you you, you put it, you find a bin because you know if you put it in law, a police come in and charge you in quick, in quick time. So one of our cultures or behaviors. How do we behave in the kingdom? How do we behave in the kingdom? In the kingdom have behaviors. Right? And it is dictated by the fruit of the spirit. And in the and the constitution tell us how we should live and move. In love not the world. It's a behavior. Walking in the spirit is a behavior. Love, first Corinthians 13, tells us how we should relate to one another. And then in the kingdom of God, there are standards. The standards are to apply everyday life. Reveal whether we have a culture that indulges and, encourage, and encourages mediocrity or a culture that inspires excellence. And that is why the kingdom of Matthew 25 talks about the kingdom of God. One man gets five talents. It's the power of talents. In the kingdom of God is like power. One gets two talents, one gets one talent, one get two, five talents, two talents, and one And you want man and talent, man went and buried. And everybody else add value to themselves. And the one parliament on only grumbling and looking and talking about him after what he doesn't know about. That, that, that's what it is. And it talks about being the difference between, between how, we, how we add value. It talks about people who don't want to add a lazy man that's not roast his meat, but a sketch. Proverbs tell us that a lazy man. So we, we have to add value to our life. If we don't add value to life, then Matthew 25 is very clear. Jesus said, the wicked servant. And, and, and that is something that we must understand. We must have standards that we live by. Paul told the church that let fornication become, we not name among ones you that become saints. We don't practice adultery and fornication and live in the world and reverence. We don't drink and become drunks. <laughs> because we understand that the kingdom of God functions a certain way. Our standards, we have standards. Standards. We have biblical standards. In the kingdom of God, you live by the constitution. The Bible is our constitution. So we draw our standards from the Bible. That's how we live in the Bible, in, in the area. So we, that is why we have to let the word of God dwell in you, which is so you understand the constitution. Some people don't want to read the constitution. They don't understand this. They create our own variation of the constitution. But the Bible is there for us. 
and then their celebration our culture is revealed by the things we celebrate as well as the manner how we, that we celebrate the world has a culture what do we celebrate holidays christmas time we celebrate christian every christian tell it christian what do you celebrate what do you do on christian the world celebrate christian like how we say everybody go and buy different things christmas to christmas is about jesus he came coming our savior so all the churches celebrate jesus we celebrate and we, we love and we dance and we sing carols and we, we move from house to house and we bring good cheer and goodwill to all men as kingdom citizens we need to take care or cue from our lord jesus christ his attitude and responses reveal heaven's culture so we get to learn heaven's culture whatever makes jesus angry should make us angry and whatever makes him happy should make us happy so just said don't interfere with the children any one of you interfere with your children they should put a milestone on your neck i might thought you, you that is capital punishment for interfering with children and that should be a cult in the church <laughs> we have to protect our children and take your children and learn humility from our children they are the greatest in the kingdom you have to learn from the children kingdom culture yes whatever fills jesus with joy should fill us with joy should make us joyful and whatever brings, brings him sorrow should make us sorrow grieve or hurt should grieve us too sin sin do not do not grieve the holy spirit so we celebrate what jesus celebrate we celebrate celebration and then another aspect of the kingdom of kingdom culture is morality the level of our moral conscience and consciousness if we the level of our culture do we shrug our shoulders at adultery and and gays and homosexual and gay marriage do we shrug our shoulders than other forms of infidelity do we turn blind eye on pedophilia and other kinds of sexual abuse do we turn a blind eye on sexual abuse I'm asking the questions. Are we willing to normalize perversion in our society? Are we willing to normalize? Are we are we committed to standing up for and supporting and promoting the highest standards of moral purity in every area? Are we standing without holiness? No man shall see God. Is that our mantra? Morality is a mantra. Because let me tell you something, you're not good, you can't storm heaven, you know holiness in our lord and the residents are talking to the residents now holiness is the lord is a watch out everywhere then our, our mission is to spread scriptural holiness to all that we learn full stop and we have to be consecrated and thread and, and i hope you know that that's the mission of the resident church all the holiness churches across the world one mission to spread spiritual holiness to every land we go So that's another value system manifest culture manifests itself in our morality hmm. and i tell you family life what kind of family life we have in we don't want to live a good god conviction i want to say something anytime you get married with anybody who don't want to live against god's conviction you're gonna see a real set of hell because you two will just tear apart we have the bible standards has to be our standard of living a covenant we cannot with god has to be kept for life amen come on say amen what god has put to send together let no man put us under you make a mistake and come on you make a covenant come on don't be a covenant breaker your whole life will be shattered forever And you have to make a decision you'll never be the same i have never seen somebody who divorced and remarried happy enjoying life enjoying life then they can't be happy the life is cheer people who live in more 
um, in my life. I live in hell. I serve in the devil and destroying people. So in the kingdom, that is why we talk about holiness. Walk in the spirit, walking in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That is the importance of speaking the truth and living holy and walking holy. Uh, then relationships. Who do we relate to? How do we relate to them? How do we treat people? How do we handle the destitute, those who are hurting, and those who are abused? What is our attitude to the poor? There is a culture in heaven that is revealed when poverty is around. When people are hungry, the culture of hell, the culture of heaven feeds them. When they are thirsty, the culture, the culture of heaven says, I have something for you to drink. Our culture in heaven, our culture is revealed by how we take care of each other relationships we got to take care of each other we have to have the, 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 you know the love 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 the lord thy god with all thy heart and love thy neighbor with thyself culture that's a culture in the kingdom love agape the love of god that is spread abroad in our hearts by the holy spirit it's common to each of the citizens in the kingdom Hallelujah. Relationships is so important. Being not equally, okay, let God tell us who to, how we are to relate. We can't relate. You say, resist the devil. There's so much word in the relationships, in the relationships, and we have to decide to develop God relationships and develop relationships in accordance with God's word and the perfection of in the constitution. Then there's another area of value called ethics manifest. Culture is, is, is um, revealing ethics. Is honesty the best policy? Or is honesty the only policy? If someone also pays you, do you keep the money or do you take it back? Kingdom ethics is always proactive. Jesus said, do to others as you would have them to do to you. Luke 6 31. This rule applies to every area of love. Ethics. Oh, you asked me why so one brother to ask me this, that you should reject. I said, Well, why Christian should teach ethics? That should be a standard part of our life. Man, I didn't know I was, I didn't know I was so dumb. But when you realize and you think people, Christians, and a lot of people who come to church, because in the church, you know. Yeah, we meet and the chairs going together. We have all kind of people come to church. Some people come up for you. Some people come in to do harm. They are when you see cooler than you in 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 that come to the organization and the church institution. I tell you, hear what Peter said in Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times. But 70 times seven. I don't know. I, I never push a message on that. 70 times seven. 70 times seven. In response to Peter's question, Jesus pulled a number. Jesus pulled a number out of his hat to make the point. 70 times seven is not a literal figure. It is seven times extended indefinitely. In other words, in the kingdom culture, forgiveness is ongoing. We forgive as often as necessary, just as we would hope others to forgive us. Jesus Christ prayed that. Again, we take our cue from the king as he has forgiven us and keep on forgiving us as we do the same to others. And this is included in the Lord's prayer. And forgive us our debts as we forgive those that trust us to give them. Ethics. Another manifestation of culture in the kingdom is social norms. I love this one, social norms. And let me tell you something. <laughs> in this hot season in the culture, we're in suit and jacket and tie. 
you know, you know, people came and tried to reculture, try to change or change in the Caribbean and try to bring their culture and help us. They must, we must follow their culture and and and, and if they take away all our history, all the things that's not good. We must have the history. That is not God. God, Jesus never did that. You take away all of you. So culture is so important and social norm. Whatever is regarded as norm in our social reveals or culture. And let me tell you, marriage is a norm, a social norm. And the, the people want to bring laws to make it shocking, a social norm. But it's not, it becoming pregnancies and people people want to come to church pregnancies unwed pregnancies and 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 boots well now they have child protection laws you know if a child has pregnancy to report it and the, and and the, and the people the purpose to have got a child to go to court and go to jail why that's that is becoming a norm you know that is normal society we protect the children in corruption in government is culture when going normal Joy, culture, talking about culture, love, that's agape love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Again, such there is no law. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. That is the social norms in, 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 in our institution, in our Christian, Christian norms, the fruit of the spirit. Another another culture part is dress. I want to talk about dress. Culture is also manifesting the way we dress. The people dress. How we dress speaks volumes about our values and ideals, as well as how we feel about ourselves. All of these relate to culture. Of course, the kingdom citizens, kingdom citizenship and kingdom citizens are invisible there's no such thing as a kingdom uniform or prescribed manner of dress but there are such thing as a certain demeanor that kingdom citizens have to carry themselves with and manifest that identify themselves as children of the king simon peter instructions to the female citizens in the kingdom applies equally in principle everywhere here what he says in first peter 3 3 to 4. here we said let beauty your beauty should not come from the outward adornments such as brittle hair and wearing of gold and jewelry fine clothes instead it should be your hidden inner self the unfold the unfading beauty of junk and quiet spirit which is of great wood in god's sight inner beauty we should dress and clothe it with inner beauty gently and quiet spirit and fading beauty they call that dress how you are clothed some people always angry some people they face from flop like a salt prune they always face you know you know what people face from flop like a salt prune they face also always one flop they always angry. I just really want to pick up salt prunes. Then another part of kingdom culture is foods. Food has always been a cultural distinctive. Certain dishes, certain ingredients, and certain seasons are associated with certain 
with certain legends of the world, certain and uh, certain regions of the nations. So we in Trinidad, when you talk about curry, it's distinctive of Indian cooking. Beans and rice are staples in Mexico. Hot dogs are staples in America. Trinidad is rice and peas. We have rice and peas. We have curry. We have roti. We have the food curry. Rice and peas. Pilau. Kalaloo and crab and Tobago. Come on here. Uh, bacon shark. We have many foods and many dishes. I want to pull it to the kingdom of food. As kingdom citizens on earth, we need food to strengthen and nourish our bodies. But also we need heaven and heavenly food to nourish our spirits. Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We need the word of God. We need to go in the word of God. My food is to do the will of him that sent me and finish his work. Oh, yes. Another part of culture is permits. We reveal our culture by what we permit. We are permitting. Jesus said in kingdom of heaven, what we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and what we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. If we if we lose if we lose lewdness and immorality, those things will characterize our culture. If we lose corruption and dishonesty, we will have a corrupt and dishonest culture, both in the church. And that is why it, what, what you see in the church happening in the church is what we have loose and the culture. On the hand, if we lose joy and peace and patience and kindness. And, and the love of God, our culture will reflect these traits. Thankfulness, saying thanks, being thankful, appreciative. That should be a culture. Hallelujah. A woman up here. As kingdom citizens, we have the authority to bind and lose social norms, moral and spiritual food of our fellow man. That is why it is important for us to be involved and engage in the to be, to be, to, to be involved in and to engage and to engage a popular culture and challenge it with the culture in heaven. We have to bring thy kingdom come. As it is in heaven and earth, we have to challenge the popular culture, not accept it as norm. They want to change our language. They want to say what we say. They want to, we mustn't say tree, we mustn't say this, we mustn't say that. Hey, come on. Yeah. We are, we, we, we are not going to bow down to popular culture. We have to say what God says. We have to live what God says. Amen. Another another aspect of, of culture, you know, of culture I want to do. This is why kingdom culture is acceptance. Our culture is defined by what we accept. More and more people claim to be believers and even kingdoms in, are buying into popular culture. Or you could be those things they want, they don't want us to sing hymns. They don't want to sing you and hip. They want to sing the songs of the world in the church. And the church is Many many institutions and church, local churches are losing are losing their the icabod the glory of God has departed in many places because they are adopting the kingdom of the world the satanic world that will be controlled by Lucifer the devil and we have to know what we kingdom in speaking to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual song getting into the word singing and making million melody into the heart unto the Lord. Come on, we have to practice here. The angels in Revelation will cry, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. You must keep God and, and Lord Jesus in everything we sing and move. For in him we live and move and have our being. Come on here now, talking about acceptance. The more we hear about the new culture, social and moral value, the more accepting we become. And eventually, it is not new anymore. I rebuke all these people who are... Who, 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 who all, 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 all those who, who are turned away from hymns and spiritual songs that is disobeying God's word. God, the hymns are old based on the scripture before we check in the scripture. That is not the kingdom culture, the culture from the world that try to bring into to corrupt the, the church. Many churches are the revelations, chapter one, two, and three. That is why we must be alert and carefully evaluate all new ideas and philosophies that come down the line. Next one is rejection, culture. Rejections. I want to talk about rejections. I 
I want to say before that, I want to say about acceptance. Kingdom citizens have a duty and responsibility to, to refuse to accept the world culture, the culture and values that are contrary to the will of God. Then there are rejections. Culture, on the hand, our culture manifests also what we reject. What we reject. Oh, you reject, you reject. We hate what God hates. We reject what God rejects. More modern popular culture has reached to the point where it rejects almost nothing. An attitude of, of anything goes prevails in many circles. Political correctness rules the day. And this is calculated and deliberate and the and deliberate determination to be nice to everybody. Avoid hurting one's feeling and refusing to stick to take a stand by judging anything that as evil, immoral, and improper. Don't talk about sin anymore. That old time thing. Don't talk, don't, don't say lie. Say untruth, don't say lie. Don't call these scriptures and line and take out some of them words out of the Bible. Straight from the pit of hell. All of them come from. Today's culture rejects the very idea of absolute standards. Everything is relative in the world today. Eh, Jesus of absolutes. Kingdom culture on the other hand rejects relativism in favor of absolute standard of the unchanging word of God. We accept the kingdom, the, the, the Bible, the standard of the word of God as our culture. And we reject, we accept what God accept and reject what God accepts. If some things are right, then other things are wrong and must be rejected. Jesus said it in this way. In Matthew 12, 30, he said, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. Mm -hmm. I'm going down the road. I have half. I'll give you about three, two more, two more, two more. Another part of kingdom culture is distinctions. Culture manifests its also in our distinctions. What distinguishes us from other cultures? What makes the kingdom culture distinctive? Distinctive. What makes the kingdom culture distinctive from the culture of the world? Why are we different from the world? I'm not talking about outward things like clothing and hairstyle as much of the inner qualities and character and values of the man. Paul said it this way, for you were once with darkness, and now you are light in the Lord. That's Ephesians 5, 8. Live as children of light. Walk as children of light. We have to walk. That's what makes the difference. The difference that we must walk, distinction, their, their distinctiveness of the believer, and its inner distinctiveness culture oh so i have given i've spoken about so many aspects of culture tonight i want to go to the final one quality standards this is important quality first of all i want to say we must be educated excellence and diligence must be our way of life in that the kingdom culture excellence diligence Come on here now. You must go for gold. So culture is manifest in our standards of quality. God never does anything halfway. And never should us. We are not people of mediocrity. Excellence, we must grow in grace. We must study to show ourselves a proof, a workman, a workman. We must approve a proof workman that need not to be a ship, rightly dividing the word of truth. We must be excellent in what we do. We must be educated. We must give. We must, you know, not only that, we must not, we, we must not, we, here, here, we must not be a lazy man. In Proverbs, God call a hunter a lazy man because he doesn't roast his meat. We must add value to our lives. 
we cannot be doing one thing the same way, the same way, the same way, the same way all the time. And we're not improving. We God will have still both children. We are always growing in grace. We're growing. We are we are, we are a queen and we are excellent and we are adding values. We are studying, we are educating ourselves. Because if you don't educate yourself, you only want to read the Bible, you only want to understand the Bible, you only want to think, you only want to synthesize, and everybody will comfort for your mind because you, you can't synthesize, you can't understand. Education is a priority for all your children. Come on here now, we're talking about quality standards. Education is a must. Education is a must. You know, not only must we go for excellence, and those of us who go in, you know, those of you who go in university, go for excellence. And those postgraduate, you cannot stay in the ministry and just study one thing. To to, to years, you, 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 you study and do a diploma, undergraduate diploma, some kind of thing, and you could teach God's people way, when, and how you're doing that. Because even with some education is a common thing, you know, you have to synthesize, analyze, you have to read daily. Paul said, Paul tell tell Timothy, you know, Study to show yourself approved, right? He said, study, study, study. You have to be able to give an answer for everything that for, for, when, when confronted to and put it in my own language, my own words. And you've got to add value. You got to understand if you if you want to go global, you have to understand how to do country studies and research and languages. You got to understand how people live. God never does anything halfway. Kingdom citizens should always be on the cutting edge of excellence, leading the way for everyone rather than following in the world's wake. In the kingdom life, we in the kingdom, in the kingdom life, we don't have to be perfect in what we what we do because we are imperfect people, but we but that, that is no excuse to accept shabby work. You walk in a church, it's shabby. Dirty, you walk in the toilet of a church and see where the people are. Some of the toilets in the churches. It, it, it's like 30 years, the same way, 40 years, 50 years, all kind of thing. What kind of people will have a toilet too? What kind of people wouldn't take in and they come in and sing hallelujah? God is not, God has quality standards. You ever visit heaven? You ever see what heaven is like? God is a God of quality. He's on his throne. He's a king in the kingdom. He's royalty. Mm, kingdom citizens in the kingdom we don't have. I was talking about our king demands the best. He the best. He must be the best people. He must be the best. And we deserve nothing less. For this very reason, it should be our joy to give our very best to the king and to give it freely and willingly. We need to have a whole kingdom people volunteering in the kingdom. Because as a matter of fact, when you come in the kingdom, you have to, what do you have to give for? What do you do for Jesus, you know? That's the bottom line, you know? They don't ask if you're a good lawyer, a good, a good batsman, a good, it's what you do for Jesus. How you add value to people's lives. How you have followed his command. And I wanted that just tonight, People measure measure performances in church by what? How many people come in? But you see that come, where you see that from anybody. That has not never been a measure of anything. We are to make disciples of men. That is God's standard. You can remember that church in New Lisbon Church in in, in in Revelation. They told they have it part. The big, the large, have everything in order. Music, this. Uh, and Jesus outside knocking. And they don't even know, they don't even recognize the knock of Jesus. That Jesus got outside the church, it was the only church in the seven churches in Revelations that was not commended, had no commendation. Christ had no commendation for that church, that church, that local church, the church of Lydia's here. Check it. That some of them had people in the synagogue of Satan and they hadn't God commend them for good things and of them. But the church of Lydia, Lydia, Christ was out, they're having a good time. We have it part, we call. So therefore we must have quality. And this thing about quality standards is really important. We have to grow. As they go in missions, the whole concept of missions and post-COVID missions, as they go and add value and send people to not only to learn, what, to share what, 
to learn what to share what we have but to learn what they have we must want to learn we don't want to dominate and impose our culture on people we want to make disciples of them in their in in, in their culture in where they live so that they can disciple the others we don't want them to be Chinese or Caribbean people we are bringing up we are bringing it and that is what they did you know that is what we do for Christ the exchange life oh hallelujah oh hallelujah hallelujah praise God praise God tonight so as I close I want to tell you once you have culture once you understand the culture of people you understand the people Culture is an act of developing the intellectual and moral faculties of education, expert care and training. You must be a learner, continuous learning. Culture is the enlightenment and excellence of taste acquired by intellectual and aesthetic, aesthetic training. Culture is the integrated pattern of human knowledge, beliefs and behaviors that depends upon man's capacity for learning and transmitting knowledge to succeeding generations pass it on. Culture is the customary beliefs, social norms, and material traits of a racial, religious, and social grouping. Culture is a set of shared attitudes values goals and practices that characterize a people a village a company an organization a corporation a local church culture means grow to grow in a prepared medium in other words let holiness be an environment for the kingdom the battle for the youth is a battle for culture and I say, let thy kingdom come. Be our task and our job. As I pray, Lord, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We got to bring God's kingdom on earth. God's kingdom. God's kingdom culture on earth. In our local churches, in our lives, in our families, in our generations. I pray tonight that we be a kingdom people that we will bring God's kingdom on planet Earth and do everything according to God's will. Don't bend to the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If you love the world, you're an enemy of God. Stay with God. Trust the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct their paths. Wow. These today, we talk on the benefit, the power of righteousness, the benefits of righteousness. We talk about all the all the issues on 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 culture. This week, a special week. I pray today that God will bless you. Tomorrow we go before Thanksgiving, and we have talking to the men. I think we're going to talk some bit about shopping and men tomorrow and how we deal with it. But how we shop for Christmas? Are we going into Christmas season? We get some new people, we put in some Christmas, holy goly Christmas song. I want to get them different things and enjoy ourselves for Christmas. For Christmas, we celebrate Jesus. And I pray that God will bless you. Yes, there are celebrations in this season of the year. It's a time that we celebrate Jesus. And I pray that God bless you. And you see much of our folk on the mission and say, go as we go this month and we go into next month, that God will bless you real good. Good night. And we love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. And amen. Left, right, left, say we moving on together. Take we instruction from the Savior. Yeah, we taking the gospel on the world. Left, right, left, we moving left, right, wrong the world. Left, right, left, we marching left, right, taking it wrong the world. Taking the gospel on the